Okay. I'll try to be fast because um, my five minutes has just been cut. Uh, okay. Um, well, I'll skip the first couple of slides really quickly because for those of you who are with, as with you know, with the group, you're much more familiar. But I'll try to be fast for the first pages because what I want to talk about is mainly the regional network against homophobia, which is a network of LGBT organizations and in some cases just LGBT individuals, independent people from the Middle East, the Balkan countries and the Caucasian countries. Um, so, um, yeah, in the, in the later slides you'll see uh, what the, the regional network against homophobia is about. And we do have a couple of members actually in the crowd. Um, Bosnia is here, Serbia is here, Albania is <laughs> over there. Um, just to just to talk about Turkey, it, it's impossible to skip the fact that the 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 the, the, the good citizen in in country in Turkey would be a person who is Turkish, a Sunni Muslim, heterosexual, able, and strong man. Uh, for those who are for those who are Kurds or Armenians or Greeks or Alevites. Um, uh, you're not really necessarily the favorite of the government. And it's actually, it's the 80 million people and 20% is, 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 um, is an Alevite, so they're struggling. The government is having a hard time with pronouncing the name Alevi. Um, well, in the 90s, that's where they kind of started looming in the country and uh, the... the well, what they did, the first LGBT group, was well, they knocked on the door of the only human rights organization that existed back then. Uh, but the the organization kicked them out because they they said um, with their own words they didn't want to be referred as the association of the faggots. So back then, you can see also there were not really lesbians neither in that community. So, um, but but um, but yeah. To go to the next one, um, it's we kind of look at that story in a good way. Otherwise, it would the gays and lesbians would stay as a chapter of that organization and would never really end up being independent. Um, and during those times in 1994, that was the first magazine, which looks like this, the first copy. <coughs> um, this is the hundredth copy. Um, in Turkish, use means hundred as well as face. So we wanted to um, come up with hundred faces that we could put on this cover. But we were really afraid that we wouldn't be able to find hundred people. Uh, and we were so happy to have more than we aimed. Um, that's a special cover I put always for Judith Butler. She was in, in Ankara for our in, international Idaho uh, in 2010. Um, that's uh, when we got in um, trouble. Um, within, in 2006, um, the, I work as the, as the editor for the magazine, but before me, the person who was doing the editing, um, he was charged with three years of prison. Um, well, it di he didn't end up going to prison. Uh, it, it was a different uh, decision that was uh, taken in the end. But we wanted to t talk about pornography. Pornography from an academic perspective. Is pornography patriarchal? Is pornography men dominated? And and all you know, can pornography be lesbian friendly? And and every possible thing you can come up with about pornography. We wanted to talk about that, but by talking about pornography, we were found pornography. Um, that was one legal um, uh, problem we had. Uh, well, this is what the first gay lesbian people looked like. <laughs> and this is the May 1st, was the first public appearance of LGBTs. It was, um, people really didn't understand why. LGBTs were marching on May 1st, not understanding what the whole goal was, forgetting LGBTs are actually at the same time workers. 
Um, but uh, I would say in Turkey the the term public morality and Turkish family structure are two terms um, where LGBTs are always subject to any kind of violation um, at court or in social life. Um, and these are the the the, um, the list of fields we have in our work. This is a picture taken when we protested the family minister, social rights and family minister, when she said homosexuality was a disease and needed urgent treatment. And our colleague was being dragged on the floor. And these are just some pictures I wanted to show you. I'm going to skip this past. Um, for those of you who are working um, in the field of education, uh, working with students or with teachers, I would strongly suggest that you get in touch with me separately because that way I can also put you in touch with UNESCO's uh, chapter that is focusing on education and school school bullying um, and it's good that you use that information as a part of UNESCO's work too. That's the Regional Network Against Homophobia and there you see the list of the countries that we have. We had three meetings so far. In the last one, we didn't have the wish to have Tunisia and Algeria. We ended up having those countries because we didn't want to cover the, the North Africa. But it was because they said we actually want to be a part of this network and there seemed to be this strong, powerful two lesbians who joined the network from Algeria and Tunisia and they are included in the, in the, in the, uh, in the list. Uh, the whole idea with that was uh, we thought in this region, and when we mean region, we mean the neighboring countries around Turkey, we said homophobia doesn't seem to be the only thing we have in common. We also have nationalism and border clashes and, 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 and militarism and, and all that. So that is what brought us together and we want to get together in meetings, not just in Europe but also in these countries. You know, we don't want to go that far to be able to see, you know, me seeing an Armenian person or, or a Greek person. Uh, this is a poster from 2010's um, Athens Pride. It's two minutes. Oh no! Can I have my five minutes back? <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I'll, I'll skip that. Oh, okay. You can read this really quickly. And <laughs> when they removed the religion part from from the IDs, the whole you know the nationalist groups were saying it was an American Zionist plot against. Hellenism against the Greek manhood, and I they, they put this Greek, you know the Greek soldier to to play with the manhood that exists in in Greece. Really quickly, that's love, faith, and hope. That's the slogan of the Serbian pride. Um, but for who those things? And that was a picture. You must know the the Last Supper, uh, the Last Dinner of Jesus Christ, and and this is the the gay version. So the whole idea in in in, in, in Serbia was to 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 um, you know basically provoke in a in a sense too. And anyway, uh, Biljana could talk about that too. You, you would know so much more about what happened really this year. Um, and that's. Yes, uh, and just want to wrap it up, say um, how homophobia is very much blended with, with nationalism, that the Turkish army calls homosexuality is a psychosexual disorder. Uh, the, 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 during the Serbian and Bosnian war, there was everybody, every kind were actually accusing each other of being faggots and, 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 and all that. Uh, these are just some pictures from our uh, solidarity events within the regional network. Uh, the Montenegro and LGBT community made its first public appearance with showing solidarity with two murdered uh, transgenders in Turkey and they went to the Turkish embassy to, to protest. And that's 1010, uh, happy 1010, uh, the LGBT day in Algeria. And to quote her, um, uh, it was... Um, the, the, the values in Algeria was basically, you know, uh, uh, based on Islam and it was more normal to be homophobic than to be um, gay. That's my last slide and I really like using it and um, to the, the, the revolution 
uh, without dance, is it revolution worth not having? So I kind of turned it into the LGBT version. Um, that's, that's a picture taken in Tahrir Square. And uh, um, it was sent to us. He never made it because of visa issues. But he's an Egyptian gay blogger. Um, and he's also, uh, his name is Ice Queer, and he's also writing for CNN and BBC if you want to check it out. But he sent this picture saying uh, it was taken during the Tahrir Square uprisings, and he said, um, apparently, from what he told these guys, were lovers. And um, there's this dramatic story between the, the soldiers and the civil part, and one was refusing to you know, attack the other person, and this was taken when there was this whole clash going on. And that's how I want to finish my presentation. Can you put the button? Thank you to Naveen who just gave us a, a very, very quick tour of the regional network against homophobia in Eastern Europe. Um, the reason we're trying to get through these presentations very quickly is because we've got a lot to get through this evening. There's still this panel and then there's another panel before you can eat your food, <laughs> apparently. Uh, I was horrified when I discovered this, so I'm hungry now, uh, so you have to hurry up. I'm really sorry. Uh, so, um, uh, now is my next dear sister, and she's from... Uh, uh, C'est jour de jeûne pour toi aujourd'hui. C'est jour de jeûne. Ah, c'est un jeûne très dur pour moi. Parce que j'ai fait de la traduction en assez anglais aussi. Anyway, the point is that um, we're moving on now to look at the experience of Sarajevo lesbians uh, and transgenders uh, through the Open Centre. My sister, you, you had seven minutes. Yes, I will do it. I will make it in five. <laughs> I'll give you one minute notice when you've got a minute left. Okay, sure. thank, thank you, you very much. Okay, my name is Marina Moreiro. I come from Bosnia and Herzegovina. And bonsoir à toutes et à tous. Je parle pas français. Désolée. Je parle pas français. Je parle un peu de Et Je parle espagnol. I want to speak about Bosnia, even though it's a very complicated state. It's a very complicated country that was um, created after the war in 1995. And this political system and the law framework try to reflect all the identities existing in, in the multi-ethnic, multi-religious and multilinguistic countries. So I will try you to make understand where we are living and how difficult it is to enforce human rights in such a context. So also uh, speaking about Islam and, and the, num the exact number of Muslims in Bosnia is really impossible to determine because we don't have a census in 1991. So there is no data available from the, after the war. Uh, also, we have to take into account the, the overlap of identities that we have in Bosnia with the existence of the category Muslim, implying religious affiliation, but also 